Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Since it's midsummer at the moment, there's no better topic than the one I chose for today a day at the beach. In this episode, you'll hear a ton of beach related vocabulary, phrasal verbs, and collocations, all of which are presented in a short time frame. Five minutes is the goal, although it might go a little longer. This is an advanced listening exercise, so don't stress if you don't understand everything. What you can do is one of two things. You can take notes, look up vocab, and do all of the grunt work of learning the challenging words and phrases on your own, or take the easy route and sign up to premium content for this episode. The premium content for five minute English episodes includes everything you need in order to master the challenging terms you hear in the audio. You are given the definitions for key vocabulary, exercises to practice it, as well as quizzes to make sure you've learned everything that you should have. There's also a pronunciation video and a challenge. All premium content can be found in the episode notes or on the website at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. For today, you will need to use your imagination. If you're somewhere loud and crazy, pause the audio and go somewhere where you won't be distracted. Let yourself fall into the story. Are you ready? Let's begin. Ahead of you is a vast expanse of blue ocean. Behind you are sand dunes, some palm trees, and rocky cliffs. There you are on the sand, atop a soft beach towel, rays of sunlight heating every inch of your body. When you close your eyes, the world disappears, and all you can hear is the crash of waves on the shore. You have no worries on your mind, and no cell service, it's going to be a great day at the beach. A few friends made the trek to the beach with you and are now crouched under your colorful striped beach umbrella. It creates a bit of shade, but let's be real, no one can beat the heat. It's sunny and humid with no clouds in sight. When sweat starts to drip down your forehead, you rally the troops. It's time to go for a dip. You walk towards the water's edge, and on the horizon, you see some white sailboats. Are people fishing out there? Whale watching? You aren't sure. You wade into the icy water, and when you're brave enough to face the cold, you go under. Instantly, you feel refreshed. Other than some seagulls squawking overhead and an occasional jet skier revving its engine, it's peaceful out. As a kid, Saturdays were beach days, and therefore, the best day of the week. You'd wake up early, drag your parents out of bed, and scarf down breakfast as they hurriedly packed the ice chest with sandwiches and cold drinks. Your parents would throw everything into the back of the pickup truck, and before you knew it, you were at the beach. Once on the sand, you'd take off your flip-flops and scout out a good place to sit. As a kid, you'd spend hours hopping from one activity to the next. Walking through the tide pools with your dad was one of your favorite activities. In the shallow water, he'd explain the importance of coral and point out little crabs and fish. You'd collect interesting seashells and listen to the ocean by pressing the big ones to your ear. Once in a blue moon, you saw a starfish in those pools or even found a sand dollar. As a kid, simple pleasures were immense pleasures. 
You loved flying your kite, watching it blow in the wind as you ran through the waves. You remember your parents burying you in the sand and laughing hysterically as you tried to get out. In those days, you also took pride in your sand castle making skills. All you needed was ocean water, a bucket, and a few shovels, and you could whip up a masterpiece in no time. Back then, you weren't concerned about the dangers of the ocean. When the tide came in, or when it got high, your family went home. Sharks? Eh, that was Hollywood. You also didn't worry about drowning. When in deep water, you wore a life vest or floaties on your arms to keep you afloat. Not to mention, your mom watched you like a hawk, even when a lifeguard was on duty. You enjoy the trip down memory lane, and thinking of the past makes you feel nostalgic. Nowadays, you don't often give in to the urge to body surf, and rarely do you pretend the ocean is lava, letting it chase you back and forth across the shore. As an adult, you spend your beach days basking in the sun. Although you love a good tan, getting burnt is not on the agenda. And to avoid it, you wear quality sunglasses, a big hat, and protect your skin from UV rays by reapplying sunscreen throughout the day, always one with a high SPF. In your teens, you'd lay out for hours on end, untying or unsnapping your bathing suit top or bottoms to avoid tan lines. Once or twice, you forgot to put on sunscreen, and by the end of the day, you looked like a lobster. You'll never forget the pain of that sunburn or how much you peeled after it. You think back to the days when you were a teenager. You'd always go to the beach with friends. Together, you'd play beach volleyball and then go float on your bright inner tubes and big rafts. Some of your friends would paddleboard or kite surf. Others would kayak or straight up surf, no kite. When the water was clear, you even got out your goggles to go snorkeling. When you got hungry, you'd have a picnic or a potluck, which usually included sandwiches, chips, fresh fruit like watermelon, and icy cold drinks. While you ate and chatted with your friends, you'd people watch. Crowds at a beach are diverse. You see frazzled moms chasing after their pasty white babies in swim diapers, tanned kids splashing around in fluorescent bathing suits, hairy old men walking around in revealing speedos, chubby people, thin people, and fit ones with perfect beach bods. So ripped, their six-packs become eight-packs. Some people go to the beach to see and be seen. You really don't care. You never did. To this day, your friends call you a beach bum. And you don't deny it. The beach is where you go to sunbathe, exercise, kick back, and relax. It is your oasis. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the NOAA, the United States has over 95,000 miles of coastline. There's a lot of beach. So what can you and what can't you do on a U.S. beach? Number one, you can't go topless unless you're at a nude beach. While nude beaches aren't as common in the United States as they are around the world, they do exist. Just be sure you're on a designated nude beach before you strip down. Number two, you can't drink alcohol on many U.S. beaches, but that also depends on the beach. Before you kick back, relax, and pop open a brewski, check to see if your beach has a booze ban so you don't get in trouble with the popo. Number three, you can have a bonfire on many beaches. Having a bonfire is a great way to warm up when the night cools off. And it's so much fun to dance under the moonlight with waves crashing in the background. But once again, you need to check and make sure it's permitted before you light up. Many popular U.S. beaches have piers or boardwalks with seaside shops. 
It's there you'll find souvenir shops to buy postcards and knickknacks. It's also where you'll find seaside candy stores. So grab yourself a caramel apple or a shaved ice, and don't forget to try saltwater taffy. If you're hungry for something savory, be sure to talk to a local and ask what to eat and where to go. Always use your English. Hope you enjoyed that five-minute English episode. If you would like to hear about summer in the U.S., be sure to check out episode number 63. If you're curious to learn about sharks in U.S. waters, check out episode number 108. Now I have to ask you, what are the activities you guys like to do at the beach? Do you like to be buried in the sand? Do you like to kick back and relax? Read a book, maybe? Do you pull out goggles and a snorkel and do more adventure-like activities? What do you like to do? Before we wrap up today's episode, I'd like to clarify some terminology. In American English, there are a number of words to describe bathing suits or swimsuits. Both words are equally used. Typical female bathing suits include bikinis, which are two pieces, a top and a bottom, and one pieces. If I want to cover my midsection, I might wear a one piece. Male bathing suits can be called swim trunks, just trunks, or board shorts when they hang down to the mid thigh or knees. When the suit is small or looks like undies, we call them a speedo. If the bottoms cover the front but show your booty in the back, we call that a thong. Thong, the thong, thong, thong. <laughs> um, any swimsuit with little fabric like a thong, we describe as skimpy. A skimpy bathing suit, there's not much fabric to it. Once again, you can always use the terms bathing suit or swimsuit if you're a guy, girl. Those terms are sort of universally accepted. When I was in college at UC Santa Barbara, I lived in a little student town called Isla Vista, which is Spanish for island view. Because off of the coast of Isla Vista, you can see one of the Channel Islands. The Channel Islands is an island chain in Southern California. Now, this little town, Isla Vista, is sort of magical. They say it's the most populated square mile of college students west of the Mississippi River. And so everyone is between the ages of 18 and 23 or 24. And to top it off, once again, they all live right next to the ocean. Sort of a dream, right? My second year of college, I lived with six girls in an apartment that overlooked the ocean. We didn't have curtains, so when you walked into the living room, you just saw a vast expanse of dark blue Pacific Ocean water off in the distance. We'd sit on our balcony almost daily watching the sunset and the surfers. Anyway, it was unreal. It's sort of this pocket of insanity, and I wanted to share the name of this city just because if you are in that age group, you have to visit. You can go surfing, hang out on the beach, do all of the activities I mentioned in this podcast episode, and of course, at the end of the day, party with locals. In the episode notes, I will post some of the links to some of our favorite beaches here so that you guys can come visit. And yeah, take off your flip-flops, take a walk in the sand, and enjoy the best that a U.S. summer has to offer. Once again, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you would like to get the bonus material that goes along with this, I highly recommend buying the premium content. You can find that in the episode notes or on the website at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Hope you're having a nice day. And until next time, bye. Bye.